Okay, I'm going to go through the assembly instructions. Actually, build one of these 3D printed wind up robots. It's going to look like this one, hopefully. We'll see at the end. And what I'll try to do is uh, recall as much as I can about the printing and stuff. Anyway, there's a few sub assemblies that uh, you can do to have ready ahead of time, and one of them would be the uh, this is a, a ratchet, a wind-up ratchet, and attached to it will be these gun barrels. I printed these in a translucent red. This part prints in this position, and the gun barrels print flat. That way they're able to print without any supports. And what we're going to do is glue the back of the gun barrel onto this support like that. So in the end you end up with one piece. And of course, if it's very easy to design that as one piece that could print like that, but again, you would have to have supports if you did that. So I'm just going to take the standard MaxiCure. This is the uh, thick, extra thick, and uh, hopefully the end's not plugged up. No, oh, we're good. Put a few drops down there, and just center it and push it, uh, push it all the way back on there. Like so. And if you're impatient like me and you don't want to wait, then you take your, your speed set and just give it a shot. And we don't need this right now. We'll need this in a little bit, so we'll just set this, uh, we'll set it right here. Uh, another thing that we can prep is on the bodies. This There's a body left and right. This is the body right side. This would be the front. When you print it, this flat side prints down, so it prints in that position like that. Here's the body left side. It's got the, an arrow indicating which way you turn the wind-up knob. And again, it prints in that position. What we're going to prep on these is there's this detail part, which as you can see by this flat side, prints laying flat like that, no supports. Um, these body parts were printed at uh, 0 0.2 and the correct positioning for this is going to be with this upper thing all the way in this upper corner up here and this is the back the back side lined up so it's going to look roughly like that but before you put it on we need to put in these arm levers these are what make the uh, arms move they print this flat side is down so it prints in that position like that so you can print it with no support the main thing is though it fits into this slot into the the body and if it doesn't move free it isn't going to work so uh, in my case when I take them off I normally take like a flat file to get any of the elephant's foot that might have happened on the bed you know like that off or run a little blade in here to clean this trough out. The large part will be on the bottom, the small part will be up here on the top and it uh, should move very freely. When we glue this on we're going to want to make sure we don't get any glue on that lever, only on on this piece and it doesn't take much, it's just a cosmetic piece. So I'll put a so I can get more than air bubbles come out. I just put a few small dots and one little dot out here. You don't want this one to be too much because you don't want it to be able to spread into that lever. And trying to uh, it's lined up the top edge and lined up the back edge everything still seems to be uh, free moving so just uh, put a little spray on there that should work its way in yeah, moved on me gotta get it centered up again Move down a little bit on me. Hopefully it'll still work because uh, 
I'm not having any luck moving the part at this point. But at least this part is uh, still free to move. We'll see. Good thing about something like this that's all PLA printed, if you screw it up, you can always just print the parts again. Not like you've lost the whole project. Now we have to do the same thing with this piece. Again, this is the front and this is the back. We want to line those two edges up like that. But only when we have this part in, which has to move freely. So it's going to be about there. Having these prepped ahead of time will make things go faster when we go to uh, assemble everything. So you can see on this one, the wind-up hole should just about match that curve in the detailed part. I see things move when I go to try to hold them in front of the camera because I'm not watching the, the part. I'm trying to watch the, the camera to make sure it's in frame. Alright, so let's just set that aside. So, now... You could prep your, your head, and the head part, this one just as an experiment, I tried putting in a little foil in the mouth to make that stand out. But uh, if you were going to have a, a solid head cap, now you could put some, some glue on there and, and glue the cap down. This is a gray one, obviously. Here's one that was uh, printed in black. You can glue that down. Excuse me. Yes. No, I'm not interested in that. Okay. So, sorry about that. Um, I was going to say if you wanted uh, a brim, a particular color in the top, another. Obviously, start printing in whatever you want that to be, then just pause your printer and change the filament out. So, for example, you could make a head like this. This brim could have been white or black, and you could have a red top. So, you can do a lot of different things. And here's what the head would look like if it was all printed in black. It's harder to see the detail when it's all in, all in black. In my case, I'm not going to use either one of these caps. I'm going to be going with a dome and this little control room guy. So like a little robot from the movie Zothra. And he's got a little control room. And that'll be on there. So I'll, I'll, I'll prep that on there. The uh, head, as you can see, prints in this direction like that. And your cap, of course, prints like that. And in... These cases, I believed I printed this at a 0 0.15 because I wanted to make sure that I, you know, picked up all the detail in, in that. But you could print them in, in anything that you wanted. It's just a cosmetic part. Depends how much time you want to spend on it. It actually doesn't take that much longer on a small part like this to print in a 0 0.15 than it would 0 0.2 but it will look better. So you might want to keep that in mind. And let's see. Okay. We'll set the head aside. So, now let's start the build. I'm going to start with the, uh, the gearbox, which are these two main frame parts, which print laying like you see them here. And I printed all these the frame parts at uh, 0 0.2. And you'll notice that when you look at the symmetry of it, this bottom circle is where one of the axles for the wheels are going to go. 
And this one you can see sticks out further. That's going to be the rear of the robot. So I can identify it with this side. That's important because if you do this next step wrong and try to put it together and have that one there, things aren't going to line up right. You, you need to have these two parts oriented the same way. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to start with the wind-up knob. I printed these in white and it prints vertically sitting like that. And I'm trying to remember, I think I, I printed this at uh, 0 0.15 so I wouldn't lose any of the detail in the hex drive and everything. And you're going to need, I'm getting some sort of lubricant. Everything will work without it, but everything works better with it. I have a little bit of uh, white grease and I'm going to put some just a little around where I know the shaft is going to uh, be working like a bearing surface. So I've made sure that that's facing back. I'm going to take the white knob piece and it's going to go in like that. Okay. The next part you're going to want to grab is going to be the spring. And as you can see the spring sticks up higher. It prints flat like this as you can tell. No supports. These parts, uh, the spring and the gears and stuff come out for at uh, 0 0.15. And you're going to want to push that on to this spline shaft. And if you need to clean it with your uh, knife or something then do that. So you just shove that on making sure that the uh, taller part of the spring sticks away from this side here. And the next part we're going to put on and I'm showing it assembled is this black part and I printed it black just so you could see the difference. This is a ratchet part you can see it allows it to turn and then catch we need to make sure you get this put on in the right direction. That's why I set it into the gear first. This side that we just pulled off is going to go right against the spring. Like so. But before I shove it on there, I'm going to put a little drop of glue. Because I don't want the wind-up knob being able to pull out. Once this whole thing's assembled, it's hard to uh, put everything back if that happens. So put some glue on there and that will end up gluing this ratchet and the spring and the wind-up shaft all together as one part. Just like that. And that's why it's kind of important that you uh, oriented things right when you did it because once these are glued together you can't really bust it apart and change it. Well, you can bust it apart, but you'll end up having to print some more parts to, to make up for it. As you can see in the end, this hole here and this spring hole are going to line up. That pin, there will be a pin right here on this part. It's what will hold that in there. But this also is going to hold an intermediate gear. Okay, so what we're going to put on there next is the ratchet gear part. And... It doesn't get glued. In fact, we want to grease the shaft so that uh, everything there can turn nice and free. And there. And if you did everything right, if you turn this, you should be able to hear the ratchet working. Just like that. I'm going to put a, a bit, bit more grease on the uh, end here so when this gets socketed together it's got some lube in there. Okay, this intermediate gear prints flat like that. And again this was at 0 0.15. And we're going to set it onto this post. So let's go ahead and put some lube on the post. and you're going to want to make sure that everything turns free there. If there's any anything rubbing anywhere or binding, now is a good time to work on it with your X-Acto knife and, and clean everything up. Now the gun part that we 
gun and ratchet lock that we prepped earlier we'll want to set on this top post up here right now just like that when we assemble we'll kind of slide it out of the way but uh, what we're going to do is fit these two parts together and the, uh, there isn't anything tricky about it we just want to make sure that this uh, post that we talked about goes into the spring hole and then everything else we can kind of just lined up as we go along and these all of these areas if you would had flashing I don't think you might have want to clean those off a little bit with your knife but they should all slide in flush like that so now the spring should be captured and it should be able to wind up we can hold the gear with our hand and, and wind things up and again because I see everything backwards in the camera everything is reversed even though I was telling you to make sure you got that on right I just put it on wrong. If the glue is set up, if I can't uh, pry it loose, then we have to make new parts and we have to start again. If we're lucky and I'm able to pry it off, I think we're lucky today. I only put a small drop on there because all I wanted to do was make sure that the uh, so let's make sure we put it on the other way around this time like that okay let's put another drop of glue we really lucked out there because normally this stuff would have uh, set up to the point where you wouldn't be able to pull that sucker apart it wasn't locking in the ratchet it's because I'm not looking at what I'm doing in my hand as much as I'm looking in the screen of the camera to make sure that I'm staying in frame. And everything in the screen in the camera, of course, is backwards. But, oh yeah, hear that click? That, that's the sound you want. You know you got it put together right when you hear that. Okay, so let's try this again. Put this on here, this on here. Okay, this is looking good. Bring that around. Yeah, perfect. You can wind everything up and everything unwinds. Everything that needs to be moving free. If anything's binding, now is the time to work on it. Perfect. Okay, there's our gearbox. So now what we need to put on is a rear axle and the drive gear and the rear wheels that's a front wheel Okay, so the axles, as you can see, like this, and your gear, the axles print laying flat, like that, and the little gear prints laying flat, like that. Again, in both cases, clean them up if there's any flashing or problem or anything that's going to add a binding. There's a little bit of an elephant's foot where it was on the bed on this side. I'm going to want that um, on the inside, not facing the back of the frame. I'll make that clearer here in just a second. The axle should fit kind of snug. You should be able to tap it. It could be that I should have maybe cleaned that first with uh, the X-Acto blade. I want a little bit of shaft sticking through now. We're going to adjust the exact position 
of this gear in a moment. But what we're going to be doing is we're working on the rear, this side here. Feed that in like that and like that. The rear wheels, all the wheels have a hub which we will lube that rides in the, the large hole. But on the front side or the outside of the wheels, these have the hole in the center. In the rear you want the ones with the hole in the center. And when you get ready to do the front of the robot, you can see how the hole is offset. So save those for the front. So you might want to test fit this bit first, just to see how things look and feel. But see what the plan is. I'm going to put some grease on that. I'm going to drop some glue down in that tiny hole. And then shove it right onto the axle until it sets up. And obviously we don't want it glued to the frame. We want everything to be able to turn and move. So, um, I'm going to... I guess it doesn't matter what order I do this in. I'm going to go ahead and drop glue down in the hole and put some grease around this nub. These wheel parts printed flat on the bed like this and they were nothing special. I think they were printed at 0 0.2. And so let's uh, get that onto the shaft. And the other side, of course, is going to go on to do exactly the same thing. Got a glob of glue down in there. Let's get some uh, grease. The other thing that grease can help do is if some of that glue gushes out, it'll kind of help everything from gluing against the frame. Just like I say, we need these to spin free. So you end up with something like that. This is the side. Here's a rear view. You can see how the black gear is going to line up with that. The elephant side of the gear, the side of the gear that was on the build plate, has a little lip. I purposely have it sticking out past this gear so it won't be a binding issue. And no matter how much uh, everything moves, it's, they stay lined up. So that gear is actually exactly where we want it. And if you kind of play with the, the wind-up a little, then you should start moving. Okay, so I think so. since I'm actually happy with the placement of that gear, I'm going to go ahead and put a drop of glue between the axle and the gear to hold it there. And I'll use some of the speed set spray. That way you don't have to worry about that gear ever moving. It's not like it's really probably going to move on its own anyway. Because as you can see, you, you tap it in place. It's a good snug fit if your ma machines are calibrated right. But um, we're getting somewhere now. It's all looking good. The front wheels, as we talked about earlier, print laying flat just like the rear did. But they have the offset holes. And you're going to want to make sure that, uh, in the case of these, that you've taken a blade or something and cleaned, since that printed down, clean that hole so it's a normal full opening. And I need the other axle, which is in this bag. So I've got an axle. And I'm going to go ahead and, and prep this out in the open, since there's no gear on it. Like that. Kind of went everywhere. Shove that down in there. I think, since it gushed out a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and hit it with a speed set. And then lube the heck out of it so it uh, won't stick to the frame. Just like so. and just put it in make sure it uh, doesn't have any bind now as you can, because of that offset hole we want the feet to be opposite of each other 180 out so when I go to glue the one on the other side if that one's back I want to make sure that the hole is forward on this one and I think I'm gonna go ahead and grease the hub if you don't have grease you can use 3-in-1 oil and if you don't have any oil at all, everything will still work. 
because the PLA is actually quite slippery against it against itself. It doesn't make a bad bearing just on its own. Okay, in this case the hole is back on that one, so I want the hole forward on this one. So the hole is forward there, then the hole should be backward there. And this needs to be able to turn freely. And we're gonna want uh, want that glue to set up. Now we come to the rubber O-rings. These can be 3D printed. They're 3D printed, uh, a set in uh, TPU flexible. It's just that it's kind of crazy to do it. The time that you spend, if you don't have flexible TPU, buying it, and the time that you spend printing it, you can get these things so so cheap. You get a whole set of 300 and some odd of them for under 10 bucks, but. Uh, just take whatever rubber o-ring or actually it'll even work without the rubber o-rings it just gives you more friction drive if you don't have o-rings if you don't have TPU you could wrap rubber bands around there I suppose in any case now is the time to do that because once we glue the feet on see it's just gonna pop around once we glue the feet on you won't be able to, to get in there and, and do this So, now we actually have a, a, a car basically, and it should be able to move, and I didn't wind it up much on purpose because this table is so small, but uh, now's a good time to be checking that everything does work right. So let's go ahead and prep, I want these wheels to set up a little bit before I go any further. There's a little bit more prep we can do on the bodies, so let's do that. This, picking out a few more parts we're going to need here. Okay. Let's go ahead and put the arms on. So on our bodies, which should be dried by now. You have an arm. Again, you can take your your blade if you need to to clean out the, anything that might be there. These little arm pins hold them on. And they print flat like that, no support. And just test fit them first to make sure that they're going to fit. That one feels really tight, so it's going to go around uh, that opening. Okay. So now it fits. When this uh, body part gets put on, it's going to go on like that. From the inside, you can see the frame kind of gets up near this hole, this arm hole. And these have little tabs. So go ahead and think of putting these in putting these in like that, kind of aiming up like a 45 degree angle. That way you'll know it'll be out of the way. And you don't need to put any lube on these. And I just drop a little bit of glue right down in there. And just kind of pinch the whole thing together. So like the arm's going to be there. Now when you move this lever down here, the arm should be able to move. So we'll, let, we'll set this aside, let that set up, and do it to this side. So again, take the pin, take the arm, make sure they'll fit together. It's a little tight. Feels good. Take that. It's sitting at that angle we just talked about. Let's put a drop of glue in into the armhole. Obviously, you don't want to put so much glue in here that it's going to ooze out and glue the arm to the body. If it feels like it's sticking, you could probably pop it off fairly easily. 
wait for the glue to dry and then sand it down until it's smooth again. But you want to make sure that everything can move freely at this point. Alright, let's set that aside. That gave our wheels a, a little bit of time to uh, glue up. So we have the feet. There's the left and right. These detailed parts. These flat edges where they print playing flat like that. And um, I believe I just went ahead and printed these at uh, 0 0.2 because it's just like the body. It's just a cosmetic part. So the slot one is going to go on the rear wheel, the center post, and the one without the slot is going to line up with the front wheel. And to hold them on, we have these little pins. And these pins, you need to make sure, see, and this one has got a rough point, you need to make sure that there's no sharp edges sticking out, because as the pins rotate, those sharp edges will cause things to bind up and typically it should print like this just fine without any best way to check it though is to go ahead and put it in the foot and just say yeah that turns completely free yeah that feels com completely free and we're going to end up gluing them in so let's test fit the pin into the foot first because Maybe we need to clean that out with the knife. Nope, that fits. And that fits. So, sometimes on, on, when I'm doing these, I it's easier to put the glue, like I'm going to do the front one first. Put the glue just on the end of the pin. There's a little, little blob. like so there isn't any real easy way to get the, the set spray down in there there's not a whole lot of room for it to work its way in there I do like to work on one side at a time because if there's a problem I'm going to end up prying things apart in this case, I think rather than trying to drop the pin all the way down in there with a glob on it, I might hit the sides, I might glue something together, I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and put the little glob of glue down inside the wheel. I think it would be easier. Like I say, it's been a couple of weeks since I put one of these together. You tend to forget what, uh, what works best. So you then you're just going to center it up, take the pin, and shove it down in there. Okay, so that one, because of the slot, you might be able to get some of the speed set spray to go down in there. Feels like that one is maybe trying to, to glue up to the wheel. Yes, that's not good try to break it loose now while I can. So some of the glue must have oozed out. And it's uh, it's trying to bond up again. I'm gonna oh the front pin didn't didn't hold so let's go ahead and pull it out and let's just try to extract the whole foot and pin assembly. Or at the very least, break it loose. Like so. I got it broke loose. In this case, I don't want it to keep trying to stick together. I'm going to take some 3-in-1 oil and uh, put that down in there. Keep that glue from sticking if I can. It shouldn't uh, shouldn't be tight like that. 
I think the glue has left some rough spots. Okay, in order for this to work right, that's going to have to uh, going to have to move easier than that. That could just be that there's a little little glob of the super glue. We're getting there. I don't think I've quite uh, captured. I think there's a little glob of the super glue inside this uh, trough right here. I'm getting better. paper towel in here to suck up some of this uh, three-in-one oil that kind of got carried away. It's not feeling too bad now. I still think I can see where the where the glue got where I didn't want it and it just made a little high spot on the inside of this uh, leg piece. Yeah, that feels better. Well, as far as this guy goes, I'm not a hundred percent sure on the best way to try and do this now. Let's see. it again. What could go wrong, right? This is probably one of the hardest parts of the whole thing is not gluing things that you don't want glued. That can't be good. see how this uh, right. I'm going to have to work on those rough spots feels like it's getting better now Get it put together right, it should. Uh, when you spin the front wheels, you don't want any friction there at all. You want everything to move really, really free. So that's pretty good. Oh, I wonder if there's an easier way to do it. Let's see. Got my next two pins, seems to fit free there. Seems to fit free there. I wonder if um, on the back of the foot, let's try this. If we put a little bit of grease around the back of the foot, or even inside the slot here. So if any of the super glue does get in there, it'll find it very difficult to uh, stick. And let's go ahead and try depositing the glue right into the holes. I'm just trying to drop a, a single glob down in there. And what I didn't do is I didn't test fit the, the pins in those holes first. I hope they're, uh, I hope they're big enough. Because at this point going to be kind of hard to change if, if they're not. Oh good, that one fit. And I'm 
that one in there. Okay, looks like the feet we have a couple little rough spots yet, but that's something I can work on. You don't have to uh, deal with it now. I can work on my rough spot later. So now we're basically we're basically done. What we're uh, going to do now is on the inside of the body there's these pins and as long as they're not too misshapen they should push into these holes in the frame now again you might want to make sure that the holes in the frame are clear we're not going to put any glue on these we'll glue the two halves together but these just pressure fit in. So we start by inserting this down like that, like that, and come around to the inside if you need to to see the pins. But there, that should just pop on like that. And if we're moving, I'm putting pressure just on the front wheel. So at this point, we actually should be able to wind this thing up. Is this, uh, is this rear wheel one still binding up? Like I say, I'm going to have to work on that rear wheel thing. It's, uh, it's got a rough spot on it. Worst come to worst, I'll actually just snap the post out, print a new post, clean it all up, and then glue it back on. But you can now take your head, whichever type of head you were going to do, set it in the slot like so, and again, if you haven't checked the holes on, on this side, you want to check to make sure that they're clean so you can put on the next side. And you don't have to glue the body halves together. You, you can just let the pins hold them together if you want so that you can take the robot apart to grease things up or whatever. But at this point we're just going to, we're going to snap this side on. And if you are going to glue your body together of course, now would be a good time to uh, to do that. So I'll end up putting a few drops of glue in a, two or three key places. That way, if you really need to separate the thing, you can come back with a razor blade and you can split the halves without actually doing any permanent damage. I just hit a couple of spots where I think it'd be nice if everything stayed together. And start lining it up here. Don't forget your head. Like so. And let's put some speed set on the back. And just bring it forward. I'm just trying to pinch everything together waiting for the glue to set up enough where I don't have to hold it but basically that's the that's the build we're done I have that one rough spot that I need to work on on this rear wheel where the super glue oozed out but other than that the sucker is together and I'm sure it won't move smoothly because of that rear wheel problem but 
can certainly see when that thing catches, can't you? It's, it's, it's on this side here. But you know how it's going to work once I uh, once I clear that rough spot up. The point is it getting winds up and everything's going right. Okay, that's the build. Have fun.